All right, so today Ed, Liz and the rest of the Last Resort Season 1 gang are set to take part in the second group therapy session where Liz devastatingly exposes Ed's lack of skills in the bedroom. The first therapy session which took place yesterday didn't go too well with Ed cheating rather than working on his teamwork and communication skills with Liz. And not only did that upset her because she felt like he wasn't taking their relationship problems seriously enough, it also upset the rest of the cast who called him out for it. Surprisingly, later in the night, Ed got defensive and started drunkenly cussing out everyone who called him a cheater. For some reason, Angela stuck up for Ed, but then took it way too far by attacking Liz, which Ed ended up saying Liz deserved. As a result, the pair had a massive fight, and so last night, Liz slept on the sofa. They tried talking things through again this morning, but their inability to communicate or respect each other's points of view meant that they made little progress. And unsurprisingly, it ended with Liz once again in tears. Now they've made their way to the second session, but the unresolved conflict has left a frosty atmosphere. If we don't learn how to fight, we don't have a chance of walking out of this retreat together. It's funny because Liz said this exact same thing several years ago and they've gotten absolutely nowhere with it. They can't raise problems with each other without it turning into a fight, so they're never able to actually work on their issues. And again, they've now got the pressure of the other couples to worry about. Kelly and Molly's relationship isn't going well either, and Kelly's sick of having to deal with Ed on top of that. I just need a break. He has to be the center of attention, constantly. In the beginning, I felt bad for Liz, but I don't because she keeps running to him, so... That's not her. Kelly's echoing a sentiment you guys express in the comment sections of these videos all the time. There are always discussions on where to draw the line between not victim blaming Liz, but also allowing her to take some accountability for the repercussions of staying with Ed. Anyway, the therapy session begins and the therapist reveals that today, they're going to be discussing intimacy. And so Ed, desperate as always to assert himself as the class clown, wastes no time in getting the first joke in. Where do babies come from? We're going to learn a lot about that today, I promise you. That was not as funny as you think it is. Ask you for a friend. I am like not in the mood for jokes at all. Where do babies come from? <laughs> the fact that it's just the first minute of only the second session and the rest of the group is showing this much disdain for Ed does not bode well for him for the rest of the saga at all. Next, the therapist says that the session is going to be more of a discussion based one than a practical one. Like they're not going to be putting cucumbers in their mouths or anything. And Ed uses that to insult Jovi. We're not? Have you seen the size of Jovi's mouth? He could fit that whole cucumber in there sideways. Wow. Give me one of those cucumbers so I can beat him over the head with it. <laughs> now that I'd like to see. Unfortunately, what I wouldn't like to see is exactly what happened next, which is Ed asking a genuine question about intimacy. Essentially, he asks if the tip of a circumcised man stimulates a woman. The therapist says yes and asks about the status of the men in the room, which leads to Ed getting roasted. Do we have any circumcised folks in the house? I don't know. Apparently a lot of people saw what Ed's looked like last <laughs> night, so maybe somebody else can give an answer. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing now, but he won't be for long. Next, everyone gets the opportunity to write in a question anonymously. The first question the therapist reads out asks, how can I make myself bigger and last longer? And immediately, Aswelu admits that it was him. Because there are some other people, they have bigger dick and some other people have small dick. <laughs> Why are you going in? Like, you know, some people, you know. I mean, if Ed's gonna roast Jovi for the size of his mouth, it's only fair that someone gets him back by roasting him for the size, or rather lack of size, of Little Ed. And as well, if he didn't want them to know how big or small it is, he should have left his shorts on in the hot tub. At least Angela isn't there to give a detailed description of the pesky little worm. <laughs> At least he's being honest. Look, here's the thing. Yeah, and at least he can laugh about it. Given his slogan or catchphrase or whatever you want to call it is laugh at yourself, love yourself. It'd be pretty hypocritical if he couldn't laugh in situations like these. And more importantly, given he's dishing it out, at least he can take it. For now, at least. Anyway, the therapist then starts talking about refractory periods of prostate fun for men. You can go again and again and again and again without having to take a break. I would love to know how that feels. Find another partner. Oh, the jokes at Ed's expense were one thing, but Liz was being dead serious there. And you could tell from Ed's immature response that he did not like getting slandered like that. Noticing Liz's response, the therapist then asked them to rate their sex life out of 10. Ed says that it used to be 11 out of 10, but now it's five. And although Liz doesn't give a number, she makes it very clear that it's all definitely gone downhill. 
I'm not someone to just like stop and give you like five or 10 minutes to catch your breath and then like get back into it. It's mm. like, I prefer to get myself off. That is some wild honesty there. I guess they've kind of got to be because they're here to work on their deep rooted problems. But having Liz say that in front of everybody on national TV must be mortifying. And then it goes from bad to worse with Liz saying that intimacy is the last thing on her mind because of how bad it is. If we don't really try to work on our sex life in the bedroom, the relationship's over. How many different things have they got to work on because they're so bad that if they can't be improved, the relationship is over. The trust issues, the communication issues, how they handle disagreements, the intimacy problems. All of this is adding up and I really don't know how much longer they can last under all of this pressure. If you could find a way to share your solo experience with your partner, would you be open to that? No, I prefer to just do it by myself. They are literally beyond saving. It's like the decision's been made and there's just no turning back. If they're not even willing to try to approach things differently with the help of the therapists, what is the point in them even being here? That said, it's hard to blame Liz too much in this specific example because she goes on to say that she often has to ask him to do it because he runs out of breath so quickly. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being so honest and vulnerable. Oh, shit. <laughs> you just know Kelly and Jovi were enjoying every second of that and probably also partly hating it like we were. It must be somewhat reassuring though, being in a couple around Ed and Liz. Like they're always there as a reminder that no matter how bad things are, they could always be worse. I'm gonna be honest. I told you, stop being funny. And then you just poked the bear a little bit too hard. Yeah, only this morning they had their third fight in just 24 hours over Ed not taking the first group therapy session seriously. And despite him apologizing and promising to change, he's just spent the majority of the second one doing the exact same thing. I would like for you guys to see what arousal feels like without penetration. Separately? <laughs> nope. Yeah, good one, Ed. I mean, you joke, but maybe you should try doing things separately, not just intimacy-wise, but also living-wise. And whilst you're at it, why not dating-wise? Maybe just separate yourselves entirely and see where it goes. But Ed is never gonna do that, is he? Because then, who would he have to take his frustrations out on? If I'm pissed because you kept throwing missiles at me. It wasn't throwing missiles. I'm you being were honest. You intentionally trying to embarrass me. No, I wasn't. I'm yeah, being you were. honest in therapy. You were right. No, you weren't. This saga is so often just watching the exact same argument in a different setting with slightly different circumstances. I mean, they're on a show about relationships at a group therapy resort where the focus is on relationship issues and he's somehow mad that she's once again speaking about their relationship issues. Given she's supposed to be about to leave her entire life behind and move to Arkansas with him, she's understandably growing in increasingly uncertain that he's going to take any of this seriously and actually try and work on their issues. He better start getting his shit together. Yes, I no was. No one else was complaining about their spouse. Shut up. So another group therapy session has not gone well. Liz has once again demonstrated how bad things are and Ed hasn't taken any of it seriously, despite saying he would just hours beforehand. I gotta say though, I'm disappointed at the quality of therapy they're getting. I mean, they're facilitating a little bit more communication and making the occasional quite basic observational recommendation, but they're really not even close to helping them work on their issues or even giving them the tools to do so themselves. So now they're just resigned to the same old kiss and make up discussion once they've calmed down. And that never seems to actually instigate any real change. Like I like oh, yeah. was rolling my eyes the whole time tonight. Every time you try to make a joke because you can't be serious in the moment. I'm just looking for that laugh. Yeah, we know you're looking for it, Ed, but after 57 years on earth and four seasons on TV with no luck, maybe it's time to retire the search. Like, come on now, Ed, you're not on Comedy Central. You're on a show about failing relationships. Have some self-awareness for once. I need to calm down my comedy because the minute things get serious or if I get nervous, I go funny. And I'm sorry for making jokes instead of paying attention. This is crazy. He apologized for not taking the first group therapy session seriously literally this morning and said how he learned from the experience and promised to take it seriously this time. At this point, I'm certain that he is either completely unwilling or absolutely unable to change. He goes on to say that he doesn't want her thinking that he isn't serious about the therapy sessions because he is, that he wants to make it work and that he realizes that their relationship is slipping away. And I say this very carefully. I just, I don't like to take life so seriously because it's so, 
I mean, something could happen to you. You know, something could happen to me. All right, not taking life seriously because you fear it might end soon is valid, but that's not really an excuse for not taking working on the relationship's issues seriously. Like if everything could change in the blink of an eye, surely you'd want to fix everything so they could spend whatever time they have left together living happily. What's gonna happen? Like if something were to happen to me tomorrow and like you, you knew everything that I needed from you and you didn't give it to me, that would suck. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why he's brought this up as if it's some sort of argument. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, I do know why. He's trying to use a tragic and profound fact, that is, that the future is uncertain, particularly in his case, to relieve himself of personal responsibility. It's essentially just a cop-out for his behaviour. Because yeah, I know I you would hurt. That, yeah. And then, like, you can be taken from me tomorrow, and I never made you feel like I had your back. You know what, it's quite nice for her to acknowledge and admit this, rather than him having to say it. Self-awareness after the fact is all too common with these two, but it's rare to see it come from within like this. So Ed once again says that he'll be serious when he needs to be serious, that he knows she has his back, but that he needs to feel it more. Okay, deal. I'm gonna try not to tear you down, and you're gonna try very hard to be serious. Serious. All right, give me a high five. Let's go masturbate. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What an awful ending to the conversation. You know, I feel like I apologise for putting you through these clips more than Ed apologises for his behaviour, which is saying a lot. Don't worry though, I suffer just as much as you. I do not want those images in my head either. I mean, for goodness sakes, with Ed, it would look like a T-Rex trying to put his sock on. And once more, I must ask for your forgiveness in advance for this next one. <laughs> Will you massage my taint? No. My prostate. Definitely not. Looks like he was paying attention in class after all, though only to the things that benefit him. What a surprise. Well, with many more days of therapy to come, who knows what else will be revealed and what else Liz and everybody else will be fighting Ed over. So if you want to keep up with the show and find out what happens next, make sure you're subscribed down below. And as always, thanks for watching.